I'm Ryan Wilson, as um, Bill mentioned earlier, I am with AARP, and I'm not going to refute everything that he said about AARP. Um, and I do have, and I'm going to take the, uh, the same license that others took as discuss it and not discuss everything in it ev that uh, was discussed during the presentations earlier. Um, I do have several things that I want to talk about that were discussed over the course of the day, one of which is the diminishing capacity of people to make financial transactions as they age. Um, somebody mentioned earlier about the, the vast difference between somebody at age 20 and age 80. The peak for financial transaction making is somewhere in your early to mid-50s. Some people say around 53. So. I'm fast approaching that. If you've beyond that, you're not quite done yet. Um, you've, you've still got some time to do. And, and this is part of the reason why it's important that we, that we continue to work with people as they, they prepare for retirement and that we begin to prepare for retirement a little early. Um, something that Matt mentioned was, was um, talking about how financial advisors of various stripes and licenses should talk to people about Social Security and how that's a good way of getting that message out there. And one of the things that we've heard recently that we find is most disturbing is many of those financial advisors actually use that conversation to sell people more product, which is to say that they tell people, Social Security is not going to be around when you're ready to retire. What you need to do is invest more money in what I'm selling. And, and that's another that's a problem for regulators. That's a problem for the financial services industry. That's a problem for policymakers. That's a problem for all of us. Um, the the other issue that that does come up is that fraud issue that comes um, as people age. That um, many many fraudsters are looking for where the money is. That that old saying about you know. Why do you rob banks? That's because that's where the money is. But that's the same reason why people go after older people, because that's where the money is. There's also a trust issue that goes along with people as they age. That's where um, they, they sit down with somebody at a conversation at a, table, at a kitchen table with someone. And Bill looks like he has a perfectly trustworthy face. He looks like a nice guy. He's well dressed. Um, it doesn't matter that Matt, 10 minutes ago, just told me that Bill Novelli is the biggest crook on the face of the planet. He's been convicted to 100 years in prison for fraud. I'm going to trust him because he looks nice and he talks nice to me, and we're having a nice conversation, and his presentation is good, and I might get taken. It doesn't matter. Um, the, the duty of care of the financial professional, I think, ties into some of the things that are the limits of financial literacy. And this is something that we're looking into um, this year and going forward is, is testing those limits. And where, where um, does the responsibility of the individual lie? Where does the responsibility of, of the financial professional lie in that duty of care and to get that person to the right financial choices? Where is the duty of care to the regulator to enforce those, that duty of care that the, um, that the financial professional has? And where is the duty of the educator to help all of these people make the right financial um, decisions? And to put it um, in a way, I've always put it very, very closely and to personalize this, I had a conversation um, yesterday with a, with a former regulator. Um, former securities banking and, and insurance regulator. So his experience is very similar to what I say. And the stakes for this are very high. If we don't get it right for people who are at or in retirement, and um, the stakes are mom moves in with you, and I love my mother very much, but I do not want my mother moving in with me. And, and that's true, you know, he was just talking about his own parents in their 80s, and if there weren't Social Security, and if there weren't Medicare, um, and, and those things that help people live in retirement a little bit better, if financial literacy is wrong, if we make the wrong calculation on health care costs, if we make the wrong calculation on long-term care costs, which is also part of health care, ancillary to health care, um, those expensive items, the expensive items of other things, mom moves in with you. So I'll leave you with that thought. Thanks.